Let's be real. Most people won't be straightforward with you if they don't like you. Instead, they hide behind fake smiles, empty compliments, and forced politeness. I used to be in that situation, thinking someone was a close friend, only to realize they secretly wanted to see me fail. It's harsh, but here's the truth. If you can't recognize the signs, you'll waste time and energy on people who don't truly understand or support you. So, let's cut the fluff and talk about how to spot the subtle signs that someone dislikes you but won't admit it. It may be hard to hear, but facing reality is better than living in a delusion. One of the easiest signs to spot is when they make jokes about your flaws. We all know that type of person, the one who loves to joke around, especially when the joke's on you. They'll tease you about your habits, mistakes, or any little imperfections, all while smiling and saying, I'm just kidding. At first, it seems harmless, but don't fool yourself. These jokes often aren't innocent fun. They're cleverly disguised attacks, aimed at chipping away at your self-esteem, bit by bit. I remember being close to someone who always had something to say about me, from the way I dressed to the projects I worked on. I used to laugh it off, thinking it was all in good fun. But over time, I noticed a pattern. The jokes always targeted my weaknesses, never my strengths. Soon, I started doubting myself, wondering if my flaws were really that obvious. That's when things got serious. People who frequently make jokes about your flaws aren't doing it out of friendship. They're testing your tolerance for disrespect. It's a subtle manipulation technique, a way for them to assert superiority while keeping you down. They're sending a clear message that you're beneath them. And the scariest part is that they often get away with it because society has trained us to think that, that not laughing along makes us the uptight one, not them. But let's reframe that perspective. There's nothing wrong with standing up for yourself when a joke crosses the line. In fact, it's necessary. You deserve to be around people who lift you up, not those who belittle you for cheap laughs. True friends don't need to highlight your flaws to feel better about themselves. They celebrate your strengths and help you overcome your weaknesses without making you the punchline. I've seen this happen time and again. People shrug off mean-spirited jokes to keep the peace, thinking it's easier than making a scene. But the truth is, when you allow others to disrespect you, even in just kidding comments, you're on a slippery slope. It starts with minor comments, but over time, those jokes can erode your confidence, making you doubt your worth. And the more you tolerate, the bolder they become, until you're just a shadow of yourself, all because you didn't want to seem too sensitive. I had to learn this lesson the hard way. I realized that every time I laughed along, I was giving them permission to keep going. I was complicit in disrespecting myself. Only when I began to push back, setting boundaries, did I notice a change. Not just in how they treated me, but in how I saw myself. I stopped letting their words define me and started taking control of my own story. So here's my advice. The next time someone makes a joke that hurts, don't just laugh it off. Ask yourself, is this really funny or is something else going on here? And if the answer leans toward the latter, don't hesitate to confront it. It may be awkward and it might even end the relationship, but your self-respect is worth far more than someone else's warped sense of humor. Life's too short to surround yourself with people who don't see your value. If someone's idea of friendship means constantly pointing out your flaws, it's time to find new friends. People who truly care about you don't need to tear you down to feel good about themselves. Stand tall, speak up, and don't let anyone make a joke out of you. We all know that kind of person whose compliments feel like subtle insults. We've all had that moment when someone gives you a compliment that somehow feels sour, like getting a pat on the back with a velvet glove hiding a fist. It's the kind of compliment that makes you stop and think, Wait, was that really a compliment or just a subtle jab? Here's the hard truth. Often, it's both. These backhanded compliments are a way for people to quietly undermine you, all while pretending to be kind. I remember working tirelessly on a major project I was incredibly proud of. 
After pouring in countless hours, I shared it with my team, expecting support and encouragement. One person, someone I considered an ally, looked at it and said with a smile, wow, this is pretty good for someone like you. I was stunned. Outwardly, it seemed like praise, but for someone like you, hit me like a slap. What does that even mean? Are they implying I'm not capable of doing great work? This is the issue with backhanded compliments. They aren't designed to uplift. They're meant to keep you in your place. It's a subtle power play, a way for the person giving it to assert their superiority while making you question your worth. The message beneath the words is, I see your effort, but remember, you're not in my league. It sounds toxic, but these words are packaged so nicely, you almost miss the poison inside. Here's the reality. People who hand out these backhanded compliments are usually insecure themselves. They see your potential, recognize your strengths, and that intimidates them. So they throw these small hidden punches to keep you second guessing, to make sure you don't soar too high. It's as if they're patting you on the back with one hand and holding you down with the other. And here's where it gets even trickier. Sometimes we've done this too, whether unintentionally or on purpose. Everyone has moments where their insecurities slip out disguised as compliments that remind others to stay in their place. But the deeper takeaway here is that you don't have to accept this veiled hostility. You have the right to recognize it for what it truly is, a reflection of the other person's own insecurities, not a measure of your worth. When someone says, you're smarter than you look, or this is good, especially for someone just starting out. You don't have to just take it. You can call it out for what it is, even if it creates a bit of tension. Because if you don't, you're allowing them to define how you see yourself, and that's a power no one else should hold. I've learned to recognize these compliments for what they are, a mirror of the other person's own doubts and fears. When you view them this way, they lose their bite. Instead of letting it get under your skin, you can almost laugh because in the end, their words reveal more about them than about you. So what do I do now when I get a backhanded compliment? I don't let it slide. I respond with something like, thanks, but what exactly do you mean by that? This forces the other person to confront the real intention behind their words, and often they feel exposed. They quickly realize that you're not playing along and surprisingly, their attitude shifts almost immediately. Remember not to let someone's hidden negativity shape who you are, whether it's a friend you thought was sincere, a jealous coworker, or even a family member. Your value is not something for others to dictate. A real compliment should lift you up, not bring you down. If someone's words make you doubt yourself, it's time to question their intentions instead. Life's too short to waste on people who can't genuinely celebrate your success. Surround yourself with those who see your worth and aren't afraid to show it openly, without strings attached. And let's not overlook the other subtle forms of exclusion some people use to downplay your importance. Maybe it's that dinner invite, the weekend getaway, or a gathering they forgot to mention to you. They'll swear it was a last minute plan, or worse, act like they assumed you'd be too busy to invite anyway. But let's be real, these things aren't accidental. This is social exclusion at its most discreet, a clear sign that you're not as valued as you might have thought. I've been there more times than I'd like to admit. I remember a weekend, scrolling through my phone, only to see pictures of a group of friends having a great time at an event I'd been excited about. The worst part? Not one of them had mentioned it to me beforehand. When I brought it up later, they had all kinds of excuses. Oh, we thought you were busy or it was a last minute thing. But deep down, I knew the truth. If they had genuinely wanted me there, they'd have made sure I knew. The issue is that we're conditioned by society to rationalize this type of exclusion. We tell ourselves it's fine or it's probably not personal, but let's call it what it is. It is personal. When people repeatedly leave you out, it's because they've made a decision about where you fit in their lives. They don't see you as an essential part of the group, and it's a painful reality to face. A harder truth we often ignore 
is how we've become so accustomed to accepting busy as a convenient excuse for being sidelined. But let's be honest, people always make time for who and what matters to them. If someone is constantly too busy for you, it's not about their schedule, it's about their priorities. This is difficult to accept because it forces you to confront the possibility that you may not matter to them as much as you thought. The bitter truth is that busy is often a polite way of saying, I don't want to make time for you. It's easier for them to blame their schedule than to admit they're choosing not to include you in their lives. It's a passive way of keeping you at a distance without dealing with the discomfort that comes with honesty. They're content to leave you hanging, treating you as a backup option without truly investing in the relationship. I've been on both sides of this situation. There were times when I made excuses because I didn't know how to tell someone that I no longer valued the friendship as much. But being the one left out taught me an invaluable lesson. It's better to be honest, however awkward, than to drag a relationship along with excuses. When I finally confronted a friend who was always too busy, the conversation was uncomfortable, but necessary. It brought me the clarity I needed to move on and invest my time and energy in relationships where I was genuinely valued. The deeper message here is that your time is precious and so is your energy. Don't waste them on people who can't be bothered to make time for you. If someone is consistently too busy to see you, it's time to reevaluate that relationship. You deserve to be around people who are genuinely excited to spend time with you, who make an effort to include you in their lives, not just when it's convenient, but because they truly value your presence. It's important to understand that people change and relationships evolve. Sometimes we hold on to someone because of habit, memories, or even fear of loneliness, even when they've clearly moved on. But there's strength in letting go, in recognizing that you deserve more than someone's leftover time. This isn't being demanding. It's valuing yourself enough to walk away from those who don't value you. Another subtle but clear sign to watch for is when someone rolls their eyes or appears dismissive whenever you speak. You know the feeling. You're in a group, sharing your thoughts, only to be met with eye rolls or a smirk. It feels like a punch to the gut. These small gestures speak volumes. They're clear signs that not only are they uninterested in what you have to say, but they're actively trying to put you down. I've been in situations where I'd share something I was passionate about, only to be met with eye rolls and sarcastic comments. At first, I brushed it off, thinking maybe I was just being sensitive. But over time, I realized it wasn't accidental. It was a form of subtle dismissal, a way to keep me in my place without outright saying so. So, what should you do in these situations? Don't accept it as normal. Hold on to your sense of worth and remember that people who genuinely appreciate you will never make you feel small. Invest your time in those who aren't afraid to show they value you, not just in words, but in action, no matter how challenging that may be. Surround yourself with people who celebrate your voice and presence. Because at the end of the day, life's too short to waste on those who can't wholeheartedly include and uplift you. Over time, I realized that these reactions weren't just differences in opinion. They were signals to everyone else in the room that my input didn't deserve respect. Eye rolls and sneers are a quiet but powerful form of disrespect. It's a way for someone to undercut you without saying a word, subtly eroding your confidence while pretending it's all in good fun. The controversial part is that many people tend to ignore these behaviors, convincing themselves it's just their personality. But what's the reality? These behaviors are toxic and have a deep impact on your self-esteem. And here's the crux. Those who roll their eyes or sneer are often projecting their own insecurities. They're threatened by your confidence, knowledge, or ability to express yourself. Instead of engaging with you as an equal, they choose to knock you down. It's a power play, and the worst part is, it often works. When you're repeatedly met with disdain and condescension, it wears on you and starts to make you question your own worth. I've learned to address this behavior directly. Next time someone rolls their eyes when I'm speaking, 
I'll respond with, did you just roll your eyes? What did you mean by that? This forces them to face their behavior and think twice. More importantly, it reminds me that I won't tolerate that kind of disrespect. So remember this, don't let anyone diminish your voice or value. Eye rolls and sneers are ways for someone to exert control and you have every right to challenge it. Surround yourself with people who respect your opinions, value your contributions, and uplift you rather than tear you down. Life's too short to waste on people who can't handle your light. Another sign we should talk about is when someone avoids physical contact with you like the plague. Let's face it, physical contact, or the lack of it, exists beyond romantic relationships. It's a fundamental part of human interaction, a way we connect and build trust. So what does it mean when someone goes out of their way to avoid even the smallest touch? The uncomfortable answer is that they're sending a clear signal that they're uncomfortable around you, and it's a sign you need to pay attention to. I remember working with a colleague who always pulled back when I reached for a handshake or gave a friendly pat on the shoulder. At first, I thought I was imagining things, but then I noticed it wasn't just with me. They seemed warm and comfortable with others, but avoided contact with me as if I carried something contagious. I soon realized that their avoidance of physical contact wasn't just habit, it was a deliberate effort to maintain distance. The controversial issue here is that physical contact is a natural part of human communication, and when someone constantly avoids it, they're expressing discomfort or disconnection. It's true that some people simply dislike physical touch, and that's completely normal. But if this avoidance is selective, when they're fine hugging others but stiffen up around you, that's a sign something's off. They may not dislike you enough to say it outright, but their body language says it all. And let's be honest with ourselves. We've all been on both sides of this situation. Maybe you've dodged a handshake or leaned back when someone got too close because you just didn't feel comfortable. Or maybe you've been on the receiving end, wondering why someone always seems to edge away when you're near. It's awkward, unsettling, and often a sign that the relationship isn't as strong as you thought. The deeper truth is that physical contact is an essential part of human connection. It's how we show trust, warmth, and empathy. When someone avoids it with you, they're not just avoiding touch, they're sidestepping closeness, intimacy, and vulnerability. They're keeping you at a literal and figurative distance, and that's a clear indicator that this relationship isn't as you perceived it. There's an underlying issue in the relationship, and I've learned to notice these signs, even when it's difficult to accept what they mean. There was a time I ignored the signals, convincing myself that someone's lack of closeness was simply part of their personality. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized it wasn't just about them, it was about our relationship. When I finally faced the situation, it led to difficult conversations and, in some cases, the end of relationships. But it also freed me from the constant wondering, why does everything feel so off? The deeper message here is simple, don't ignore the signs. When someone constantly avoids physical contact with you, it's not just a quirk, it's a statement about their comfort level and connection with you. If you notice this pattern, don't be afraid to address it. It might lead to a deeper understanding or reveal that the relationship isn't as stable as you thought. Either way, facing the truth is better than living in denial. Remember, you deserve relationships where physical closeness isn't something to avoid but rather something that happens naturally and comfortably. Whether it's a friendly hug, a handshake, or just sitting close without awkwardness, these small gestures build trust and connection. If someone consistently avoids them, it's a sign something's wrong. Don't shy away from asking difficult questions, and if needed, make tough decisions. Life's too short to be surrounded by people who keep you at arm's length, both physically and emotionally. Let's talk about another sign, when they disappear the moment you need support. Let's be real, nothing exposes the true nature of a relationship like a crisis. When things get hard, you learn who's truly there for you. So what does it say about someone when they vanish just when you need them most? 
This isn't just a sign of unreliability, it's a clear warning that they don't care about you as much as you thought. And face it, when someone ghosts you in your time of need, it's not just painful, it feels like betrayal. I learned this lesson the hard way during a particularly difficult period in my life. I was facing a serious personal issue that left me feeling deeply shaken. Naturally, I reached out to friends I thought were close, expecting at least a comforting message or a call. But guess what? Nothing. The very people I thought would show up made excuses. I'm too busy with work. Sorry, I'm just slammed right now. I'll get back to you soon. But they never did. The controversial truth is that everyone likes to say they'll always be there for you. But when life gets tough, many are only around for the good times. They'll party with you, laugh with you, and bask in your happiness. But the moment things get real, they're nowhere to be found. It's easier for them to ignore you than to deal with the discomfort or messiness of your pain. They don't want to get drawn into your problems because, deep down, they don't care enough to be there when it truly matters. Let's be honest, real support isn't about convenience. It's about being there when things get tough, when it's uncomfortable, and when it's the last thing you feel like doing. Those who disappear in your time of need aren't just being inconsiderate. They're showing you that you don't have a meaningful place in their life. They're quietly telling you, your problems aren't worth my time. I remember the sting of realizing that people I'd been there for in the past, through their breakups, family issues, career setbacks, couldn't extend the same care in return. It was a harsh wake-up call, but also a necessary lesson. Not everyone who laughs with you is truly on your side. The message here is that genuine support is the foundation of any meaningful relationship. It's easy to be present when things are good, but the real test of a relationship is how people respond when life gets tough. People who truly care won't disappear when you need them most. If someone vanishes just as you reach out for help, they're not only letting you down, they're revealing that they were never truly there for you from the start. Don't let their absence make you bitter, let it make you stronger. See it as a filter, revealing who truly deserves to be in your life. Those who stick around, check in, and show up even when it's inconvenient are the ones who matter, and these are the relationships you should cherish and nurture. Ultimately, life's too short to invest in people who only appear when it's easy. Surround yourself with those who'll stand beside you in the storm, not just under sunny skies. Because when you find those rare people who stay through the worst, you've found something worth holding on to. And for those who choose to walk away, let them. They've shown you who they really are. Now let's talk about another telltale sign, when they talk behind your back. Gossip is a social poison, spreading faster than wildfire and capable of burning down relationships in an instant. Unlike what some may claim, gossip is never harmless. When someone you trust speaks about you behind your back, they're not just sharing idle stories, they're actively undermining your trust, reputation and connections. Realistically, when someone gossips about you, it's a blatant display of fundamental disrespect for your character. I once had a friend who appeared supportive on the surface, but loved sharing my private details as if they were common knowledge. Before long, I was hearing gossip from people I barely knew about things this friend had shared. It was painful, leaving me feeling both betrayed and exposed. This wasn't just about them spilling personal information. They were twisting the narrative, painting a negative picture of me and creating distance between me and others. Here's the controversy. Gossip is toxic behavior that often hides deep insecurities. When someone feels the need to talk about you rather than face you directly, it reflects their own issues, not yours. They're projecting their own fears, jealousy or insecurities onto you constructing a narrative that suits their own agenda. So what do you do when you discover someone has been, has been talking behind your back? You confront it. I know it's uncomfortable, but ignoring the situation only gives it more power. When I finally faced this friend, the heated conversation revealed a lot about their character. It turned out they were dealing with their own insecurities and felt threatened by my achievements. 
Instead of having an honest conversation with me, they chose to tear me down. The takeaway here is simple. Gossip is a sign that someone isn't a true friend. Real friends uplift you. They don't undermine you in secret. If someone's spreading rumors about you, it's time to reevaluate their role in your life. You deserve relationships built on trust, loyalty, and open communication, not betrayal and petty talk. And remember, even if you're the target of rumors, don't let it define you. People will talk, but your worth isn't decided by their opinions or stories. Focus on the relationships that truly matter, those grounded in respect and mutual support. When you surround yourself with genuine people, the noise of gossip fades, and what remains is the strength of real friendship. So don't let someone's backbiting shake you. Face it, learn from it, and move on. Life's too short to waste time on people who can't stop mentioning you in a negative light. Seek out those who celebrate your successes and lift you up instead of those who only know how to tear you down. True friends will be there to encourage and protect you, and those are the relationships worth holding on to. Thanks for watching. If this content helped you, don't forget to like, share with friends, and subscribe for more videos. See you in the next one.